Lady and the Gentleman. I'm D. Wei Chen from Kaohsiung Veteran General Hospital, National Yangming Jiao Tong University, Taiwan. First, I would like to thank the committee to give me this opportunity to present my research results here. This regulation of N1M2 of a tissue tissue induced DM comorbidity. This regulation of N1M2 in adipose tissue will induce pathogenesis of obesity and comorbidity of DM, such as insulin resistance and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So if the macrophage of adipose tissue go to the N1 population, the N1 macrophage will Reduce Tianfa alpha, I1 beta, L23, IL12, and will induce inflammation, insulin resistance, and tissue damage. However, if the macrophage of edible tissue go to the M2 pathway, the M2 macrophage will reduce IL10 and TGF beta, and will go to the anti inflammation, insulin sensitivity and tissue repair. Diabetes will increase the permeability of the intestine and the free fatty acid and the toxic lipid metabolites will pass through the intestine and go to the liver and induce stetosis and the inflammation of the liver through the activation of the Kupfer cell and the toxic will go to the edible tissue and increase the macrophage to become M1 pathway and increase the edible tissue insulin resistance and increase the inflammation of the edible tissue. We can harvest a lot of edible tissue from human through the liposuction. Then we can get the strobar vascular fraction and the edible stem cells in the edible tissue. Therefore, we first use the strobar vascular fraction of the animals to study the M1 and 2 polarization of the mouse. We use the animal of deeper DBDB mice. The deeper DBDB mice is a mice with a mutation in the gene encoding the leptin receptor and will become obese at three to four weeks of age and will exhibit elevated plasma insulin and blood sugars at four to eight weeks of age. So animal is diabetes and obese mice. And we use this animal as a model of study to mimic the type 2 DNA. So we harvest the edible tissue from those animals and put on the ice and digest with the collagenase. And through the cell strainer, we centrifuge the edible tissue and we harvest the sugar fraction of those animals. First of all, we harvest the SBF from the DBDB mice and the control mice and examine the TFR alpha, IL6, IL1 beta, IL10, CCO2, and the DB4 measure the IV expression of SBF. And we found that SBF from the DBTB mice demonstrate a increase of the TF alpha, I1 beta, DB4, and CCO2 in compare with the SBF from the control mice. 
Next, we treat the SBF for fun, the atypical tissue of DBDB mice with control plasma or plasma from the DBDB mice. And we found out that control plasma will decrease TFR alpha, I1 beta, db 4 but increase I10 of SBF from the DBDB mice. However, plasma from the DBDB mice did not decrease TF alpha, did not decrease I1 beta, did not increase I10, did not decrease DB4 of SBF from the DBDB mice, but increase CCO2 of the SBF from the DBDB mice. This suggests that control plasma will decrease the M1 expression of the SBF from the DBDB mice. Next, we harvest the SBF from the DBDB mice and treat with the Long, long DM plasma or, pl or DM plasma and inject those treated SBF into the active tissue of DBDB mice. That means that we harvest the SBF and we treat with long DM or DM plasma to manipulate those SBF and uh, send those cells back to manipulate those animals. And we found out that if we inject those SBF that has been treated with the lung diabetic plasma, we we'll decrease DNF alpha, decrease IL-6, IL-1 beta, and increase IL-10, and decrease IL-33, and decrease DP4, of the SBF of adipose tissue. However, those SBF that has been treated with the DBDB plasma did not increase IL-10 and did not decrease TF alpha, IL-6, IL-1 beta, IL-33, and DP4. This suggests that those SBF that has been treated with the different plasma can be sent back to edible tissue to manipulate the edible tissue to go to M1 or M2 polarization. Next, we have the cells from the atypical tissue and purify to atypical tissue macrophage and lung atypical tissue macrophage to evaluate which cells has been changed through the injection of the treated SBF and we found out that atypical tissue macrophage has been changed such as that L10 of the DBTB mice has increased after the injection of the non diabetic plasma treated SBF. However, those treated with the diabetic plasma treated SBF did not change. And this is the same with the CCO2 and the DP4. This suggests that the atypical tissue macrophage is main responder of the treated SBF in DBDB mice. Next, we use the flow to demonstrate that 
the M1 in edible tissue that has been treated with the SBF, treated with the non diabetic plasma, all diabetic plasma has been decreased. That means that SBF could induce a decrease of the M1 in deep, deep, type 2 DMIs. So we use the CD11C positive and the CD11B positive cell to evaluate the M1 expression of the edible tissue. We can see here the M1 cell has been decreased after the injection of the SBF. Next, we, we evaluate the t rex cell of the edible tissue. As we can see here, SBF treated with the lung diabetic plasma and inject to the edible tissue could increase the t rex cell in the edible tissue of the DBDV mice. And we use the delta PCR and the flow cytometry, both shows that the t rex cell has been increased after the treatment with the SBF. Next, we evaluate the inflammation of the liver after the injection of the SBF that has been treated with the Lung diabetic plasma or diabetic plasma. And here we can see that the DBTB mice demonstrate an increase of the inflammation of the liver by increased the ICAN, FMO3, TMF alpha, inodes, DB4, and IL6, cytokine expression of the liver. And the SABF treated with the lung diabetic plasma will decrease the ICAN, FMO3, TF alpha, and L6 of the liver. However, SBF treated with the diabetic plasma has no effect to decrease the ICAN, FMO3, TF alpha, inos, DP4, or IL6 in the liver of the DBDB mice. This suggests that SBF treated with the diabetic plasma could decrease the inflammation of the liver in type 2 DM. Next, we examine the adiponectin and the plasma CCO2 label of those mice, and we found that DBTB mice demonstrate an increase of the adiponectin and the plasma CCO2 as compared with the control mice, and SBF treated with the lung diabetic plasma decreased the adiponectin and the plasma CCO2 label after the injection to the adipo tissue. However, SBF treated with the diabetic plasma have no such effect. This suggests that SBF treated with the diabetic plasma could decrease adiponectin and plasma CCO2 level in diabetic mice. Next, we examine the phosphor AKT, AKT phosphor ERK, and ERK Western blood protein expression of the liver. And we found that lipo DPT mice show a decrease of phosphor AKT expression in liver after the injection of the insulin. However, the injection of the SBF treated with the control plasma will increase the expression of the phosphate AKT 
after the treatment with the insulin. This suggests that the SBF treated with the lung plasma will increase the insulin sensitivity of the type 2 DMIs after the injection of SBF to the edible tissue of deep DMIs. And uh, this has a dose dependent effect. Those treated with the two times SBF show an increase of the expression of the force of AKT as compared with the one times SBF. Also, the intraperitoneal glucose tolerance test demonstrate that SBF treated with the lung diabetic plasma will decrease the glucose tolerance test in lipo-DBDB mice. This suggests that SBF treated with the lung diabetic plasma will increase the glucose tolerance in diabetic mice. So in conclusion, DM will induce the edible tissue M1 expression. Then will decrease the edible tissue T drag and will decrease the edible tissue PPR gamma and will increase the plasma D4 activity and the CCO2 level and will increase the liver ICAN, FMO3, I1 beta and nose and decrease the insulin resistance and the glucose tolerance. If we treat diabetic mice, type 2 DM mice with the SBF with non-diabetic plasma treated and will induce those SBF edible tissue to M1 and will reverse the, edible, the DM effect on Treg plasma D4 activity, liver inflammation, and insulin resistance. Therefore, we believe that we can manipulate the type 2 DM through the injection of the SB that has been treated with the non diabetic plasma. In the future, this may be our strategy by unicellular therapy in diabetic mice. Thank you very much.